Right before we jump into this video, if you want to get my free 11 days to better photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com 11 days to get started right now. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a user's guide for how to set up your Canon EOS M5. Now, this may be a long video because I'm going to go through a lot of different settings as well as all the different buttons for this camera. Now, keep in mind, if you take one nugget of information from this, then the video has done its job. But something tells me it's going to help you set up the camera because this is going to be much easier to follow than if you were reading the manual. But try to go through the manual once and then refer back to this video when you need help. So let's start with the first things first. Where does the battery go in this camera? Right here on on the bottom. So you just press here and slide your finger this way, the door pops open. This is where your battery goes. There's only one way for it to go in. Just pop it in like this, click it like that. You'll also notice that there is a SD card slot right here. So I've got a card right here, my Lexar 128 gig SD. Pops in down here at the bottom, boom, to shut it. Press the door in like that after flipping it down and you're good to go. So now I wanna show you how to put the lens on because that may be confusing the first time you do it. Right now I have the lens on, so I'm gonna take it off. But you see this white dot right here and you see the white dot right here on the camera? Well, you go ahead, line those two up, turn it away from you. In this case, the way that I'm holding it, I turned it away from me and it locks in. Now to release that, to change lenses, you just press the release button right here then turn it the opposite way you just did and it comes off. Now I want to remind you, you don't ever want to touch the sensor right here, which is inside your camera. If you mess that up, you'll probably need a new camera. So just be careful when you're changing lenses. White dot to white dot and boom, right there. So how do we turn the camera on? On and off switch right here, on, boom. We just turned it on. Coming around to the top of the camera, we have your shutter button. That's the round thing in between this thing right here. The shutter button is what you press halfway down to focus your images and then press it fully down to take a photo. Right here you have a dial function button. You could kind of set that to a couple of different things, so check the menu for doing that. You have another custom dial that we personally, right here, turn this one into using the ISO. I'll show you how to set that in the menu later. This is for exposure compensation. If you're going to be shooting manual, you may use this. Personally, I never touch exposure compensation and I never have. Right here you have a button that says MFN, multi-function. You can change that to a couple of different things. I'll show you that in the menu as well. Then you have a dial right here for changing your shutter speed if that's what you would like it to do. That's what we had it set to do. Right here you have a lightning bolt. If you press that, the flash pops up. Pop it back down to lock it in, press it again, pops the flash up, you're good to go right there. Let's come around to the top of this dial right here. This is your mode dial. This is where you set it. If you're in auto, you'll see full green. And then you can go around the rest of the wheel and you'll see P, TV is shutter priority. AV is aperture priority. Manual is for full manual. You make the changes and set all of your settings. C1 is a custom one. C2 is custom two. Now you can set that to what you would like. It's nice to have that function in the camera. Movie mode, this weird looking dial right here, this one with those three circles that are intertwining, that's HDR mode. It probably should have said HDR on the top of that. For those of you who don't know what that is, if you go into that mode and you press the shutter button, it's going to take three pictures and then merge them together, giving you a high dynamic range image. Moving around, you've got scene mode, so things like portrait or food or panning. There's different options. You'll see those in the menu when we go through that. You've got your creative assist mode. That's where it's going to help you be more creative if you need help being more creative. Then you have a full auto, uh, a secondary auto one, which is a hybrid auto, and then full auto, which we're still set to right now. This right here is your hot shoe. This is where you would put a flash, an external flash, or you could put a microphone if you have an external microphone that you want to use on this camera. Now right here is what's called the electronic viewfinder. Do you see how this is lit up? This is your LCD screen that is a touch screen, but watch as my finger blocks the proximity sensor. It now switches from this screen 
up to the EVF just like that. So if you put your eye up to it, it's going to go ahead and turn off the LCD and allow you to see what's in the electronic viewfinder. That's what EVF stands for. The LCD screen can come out like this, can flip it down like this. See that? It allows you to do that for selfie mode, but keep in mind if you put it on a tripod, you won't be able to use the screen like this because it would be blocked by the tripod head. So I'm going to flip this back around right here. Oh, actually, before I do that, why don't I show you this? If you wear glasses, this is the diopter. Or if you want to take your glasses off and you want to dial in something that helps you see the electronic viewfinder easier, go ahead and use the diopter right there. Closing this up, then we have these buttons right over here, starting with the info button, the record for video. We've got this one, which helps you select your focusing points, and the star one, which I personally don't ever really touch. Uh, moving around the mode dial, if you turn this one, we have it set to change your aperture. You can see that you have your ISO or your flash settings or manual focus or the trash can as well as the Q and set. When you hit the Q button, it brings up a quick menu on the back of your screen. You've got the play button as well as your menu button right down here. Now moving to the side of the camera, you have if you want to connect it wirelessly through NFC or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you go ahead and hit that button right there. Right here you have the HDMI port in case you want to go to a TV to show back your images or you want to go to an external recorder. Now looking at the bottom of the camera, you already saw where you put your battery in, but this is your tripod mount. If you want to mount it on a tripod or a stabilizer or anything like that, this is where you would go ahead and do that. Now turning to this side of the camera, you've got a remote plug, you have where the USB goes, and you also have a microphone input. One thing you don't have on this, in case you're looking for it, is a headphone jack to hear back your audio. So that's one thing it doesn't have, but you see that it does have microphone input, which is great. So there's only a couple more buttons around the front. You have this button that you can preset down here. That's your depth of field preview, something that's still left over from the old film days. You can map this to a couple of different things if you would like. And there's another sensor right here on the front of the camera for using your remote. Uh, and that's pretty much the outside of the camera. So those are your buttons. Like I say, just get familiar with them, play with them, see what works out. And I'm going to come back and go through how I would set this up in the menu settings if I was using it to go shoot. Right before we jump into the menu setting, I want to let you know that I took this camera out for a full real world review that you can check out right now. Click on the I button in the top right hand corner. You can go check out that video after you're done watching this. Now I also want to let you know that you will see this thing sitting right here. This is called an Atomos. This allows me to use the HDMI so that I can show you what's on the back of the screen in the menu system so that you can see it as I go through it. But I also want to let you know that because of that, I no longer have touch screen functionality, so I'll just be using the dials. Remember that anything that you see on your camera, you can probably touch the screen to make the change. So right now on the back of the screen, you can see that it says to fully use the camera, push and hold the switch in the diamond direction, then rotate to unlock. That's right here. If you have the kit lens that came with this camera or some of the other lenses have to be unlocked before you can start shooting. In this case, you press the diamond that way, you unlock it. I now have access to shoot with the camera. So let's go into the menu. I wanna show you what's in the menu system. Do you see this? I am set to auto right now. I want you to know that if you stay in the auto modes, you do not have full access to the entire menu system of this camera. So I'm going to switch out of that into manual mode and we'll go and hit menu again on the back and you are going to go ahead and see that more things have turned on. So why don't I walk you through this one step at a time. You can see there's a lot of different menus here, but this is really a good thing to watch and take some information from so that you can see how I set up the camera and maybe that will work for you. But again, play with your camera, try it out because that's the best way you're going to learn what works for you. Image quality, first things first. I have it set to raw plus something. 
Now let me explain RAW real quick. RAW is an uncompressed format where JPEG is compressed. A lot of people are perfectly fine just shooting JPEGs. A JPEG file is basically done once you shoot it, whereas a RAW file needs to be processed in a computer after the fact, meaning if you take 100 pictures, you have to process all 100 of those. My recommendation for most people if they don't know what to do is shoot RAW plus JPEG fine, which is the JPEG large right here. I say that because at some point, if you want to go back and edit the raw files, well, you'll still have them on file if you shot them. If you don't, you can't get those raw files back again. But look, if you're somebody who just wants to take snapshots, leave it in JPEG all day and go to town. How do you switch those? You could touch them on the screen or just use the jog dial right here. And all of that information shows you how many pictures you would get on the particular card that you're using. I'm gonna hit set okay in the middle and we're good to go. Still image aspect ratio three to two. I wanna leave it in three two because that's how photos generally have been shot and I wanna leave it in that because that's how photos will probably continue to be. Moving through, we've got shooting information display. Let's go in and see what this is. We've got screen info toggle settings. I click through, you can see that you can set your screen settings for what you would like it to be. Go play with that as well. You have VF info toggle settings. So that's for your viewfinder. It's gonna show you different things up on the screen in your viewfinder. So this is whatever works for you is what you should be using. Moving through, uh, VF vertical display on. I go ahead and leave that on. Grid display, if you would like a grid to always show up, you could leave a three by three grid, or I'm guessing six by four. You have three by three plus diagonal. Look at that, that means you've won tic-tac-toe. Good for you. Uh, three by three is probably where you wanna leave it. Histogram, I have set to brightness. Moving on through, exposure simulation. I leave this on enabled. What this means is that when you're looking through your viewfinder or on the back of your screen, the exposure as you make changes will be representative of the proper exposure. So if it's underexposed, meaning it's too dark, you're gonna see that. Or if it's overexposed, too bright, you're gonna see that it's good to enable this. So that's why I do that. And reverse display, I have on as well. Moving over to number two, we've got display mode. You have smooth plus power savings. I leave it on smooth. The reason is basically what you see is what you're getting as it's happening. If you put it into power saving, it may be a little herky-jerky or stuttering, and you may miss some of the shots that you were trying to get. So back into the menu, VF display format. This is your viewfinder display. I have it to display one, so it fills up the entire viewfinder when I'm there. Image review, I have off, meaning when I take a picture, the image doesn't show up in the viewfinder if I'm looking through it or on the back of the screen. I don't want that to pop up after I take a picture because you don't wanna take a picture, check a picture. Take a picture, check a picture because you'll start missing the shots you should be getting, so don't get into that. Touch shutter is something that I leave off. I don't wanna go ahead and touch the screen and have it take a picture. Most people should probably leave that off. Next, we have touch and drag AF settings. There is something fantastic about this camera that when you put your eye up to the viewfinder, you can change your focus points by sliding your finger across the LCD screen and your focus points are going to move. I love this option and you can turn that on right here where it says active touch area. You can change it to be the right, to the left, to the top right, the bottom right, and then the top left. I leave it fully on the right. Now, if you're gonna be somebody who wants it on on the left, you're gonna be holding the camera like this, and it may not be as stable, but because these lenses are so much smaller, it's probably easy to, to do that. Let me explain this real quick. Here's how you should hold a camera if you have a lens on it like this. Tuck your elbows in, bring your face up to the viewfinder, and that's gonna be much more stable for shooting. But if you feel more comfortable putting your finger back here, then by all means do that. Just know the recommended way that I suggest it is to put your hand underneath, tuck the elbows, and go like this. It's gonna be much more stable. Now, you may see this position method relative versus absolute. Relative means that if you move your finger around and the focus points change and then you move your finger off the screen, when you put your finger back on, it's gonna be in the same place as it was 
when you left it. So moving on, we've got quick setting menu layout. This is for that Q button right here. You would hit that. These are different things that you can turn on and off that will show up when you hit the Q button. Let me show you what happens when you hit the Q button. You see this? It pops up all of these different options because now you can quickly get to them. You could touch the screen or you could move up and down to select different ones. It's actually easier to touch the screen. So back into the menu, let's get into number three. Uh, AF operation, we've got one shot versus servo. One shot means if you hold the shutter button halfway down, I can actually show you, it's going to stay locked in in focus as I move around. Now if I take my finger off, you see the green box went away, I now have to go ahead and press it again to focus, and then I could shoot the picture and it would go ahead and take it. So back into the menu setting, Instead of one shot, we've got servo. This means that the focus is always on as long as my finger is pressed halfway down. Don't worry about that beep. For whatever reason they have it, probably it'll let you know that it's active, but you can see that it's continually focusing. There, it's on my hand. I move my hand away, and remember, my finger is pressed halfway down on the button. This is good to remember. One shot means you lock your focus in, it stays set as long as your finger's pressed down, and in this case, we're in servo, it's always gonna be focusing as I do this. I have a whole video on this in my 11 Days to Better Photography. If you haven't signed up yet, go to fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Now let's get back into the menu. I told you there's a lot of stuff in the menu system here, but really, you set this once and you get familiar with where things are so you can quickly get to it in the future. This is pretty much a one-time thing. AF method 1.AF. You have smooth zone AF, that's a larger autofocus area, and then you have what I thought here was L plus tracking, but little did I realize the L is actually a nose. That's face tracking. Good job, Canon, on making an icon that I thought was an L. Uh, that's for face tracking. It's pretty good if you try that out. If you just want to have the camera kind of do everything for you, that's gonna go ahead and do that. And this time, I'm gonna leave it on one point. AF frame size, I go ahead and leave that on normal. Continuous AF, I have off. This is something you probably wanna leave off. Um, I tested this out. What it means is if you were to lock your focus in on your hand and then move it away, it's gonna continually focus in the viewfinder, though if you took a picture, your hand would still be in focus. It's confusing. Leave this one off, just leave it off. Focus modes, this is interesting too. So now they tell us, enable manual focus by turning the focus ring after autofocus. So if you have AF on, that will also let you turn this ring right here on your lens and manually focus. This is a good one to leave it in or in just AF if you're never gonna manually focus. If you are gonna manual focus by itself, you could just go into MF right there. AF assist beam, let's see what this looks like. If it's too dark, it's on right now. What's that other one say? Disabled, okay, let's see if it comes on. Oh yeah, you see that? You see that, you see that orange light coming on right there? Yeah, that's annoying, right? You don't wanna see that because if you're gonna shoot photos of somebody and try to get candids and that orange light's coming on, that may not be a good thing. So I go ahead and turn that off in every camera that I use, off, gone. All right, we've moved through three, let's get to four. Now, you don't see MF peaking, which is manual focus peaking settings, on for us right now. That's because we're plugged into this Atomos. What that means is it gives you a different color inside of your screen as you're focusing to let you know that with manual focus that you're in focus when you're in focus. Try it out one time. Moving on, we've got IS settings, IS mode continuous, so we go ahead and leave that on. Now, digital IS, you, that this is only enabled for video. What it's gonna do is crop down your image just a little bit to help you stabilize it if you're moving or on shaky ground or in a car, so that's something you should leave on enabled. Moving through, lens aberration correction, I don't even touch that. Auto exposure bracketing, and this is a little bit of an advanced mode for those photographers that remember shooting in auto exposure bracketing. That means if you want to take multiple shots and you want to have one of them be darker, one of them be brighter, and one of and, and that means that one of them is going to be more correct, or in the new way of doing it, if you want to do HDR, high dynamic range yourself, you can take a darker image, a brighter image, and one right in the middle, and you can merge them later in the computer. Moving on to five, ISO speed. You can go ahead and set your ISO speed in the menu here, or you could do it in the quick mode on the back of the camera, or we have this dial up here set to change the ISO, because actually as I turn it, you can see it's changing. It's just easier when you preset certain buttons 
to functions that you use more often, especially ISO. So moving back into here, you can also set if you're gonna shoot auto ISO, a maximum that the ISO would end up going. Now keep in mind, the lower the number, the more light you need, the higher the number, the more grain you're gonna end up seeing in your images, more noise, more grain. I also demonstrate this in the 11 days to better photography. Highlight tone priority, I leave that off. Auto light optimization, off as well. Metering mode, I'll show you this real quick. You've got your metering mode, choose the metering mode, how subject brightness is measured. You've got spot metering, partial metering, and evaluative metering. I leave it in evaluative metering, and what that's gonna give you is an average reading of the brightest and the darkest part of the scene, and it's gonna give you what the camera thinks is the proper exposure. So moving back in here, we've got flash controls. If you're gonna use the flash, then you can see that you have a bunch of different controls if you're gonna use the flash. Moving on to number six, white balance. I leave this on Auto white balance for just about everything I shoot because when I shoot raw, I can tweak the white balance later. If you shoot JPEGs, you may want to change the white balance depending on the situation you're in. You can see some of the different options right here on the screen and you can actually see the effect happening as I am changing it. It's even nice that you can do your own color temperature right here yourself. So I'm gonna get that back into auto and leave that set right there. Custom white balance, you could set that yourself if you wanted to do that, white balance correction. Uh, some, another thing I don't even touch, picture style. This is something that if you shoot JPEGs, you're gonna wanna have set. You can have it do it auto, which is pretty good most of the time. And remember that you can change your different picture styles here. That's also going to affect your video as well. So you can see we've got fine details and neutral and faithful monochrome remember if you shoot a jpeg in monochrome you're throwing away all the color data you can never get it back if you're shooting jpeg if you're shooting raw that raw data will still keep the color but on the back of the screen you'll still see the preview in black and or white and when i say black and or white i actually mean monochrome so let's keep moving through. You've got custom user defined one, two, and three, which is awesome that they give you multiple options for that. Long exposure noise reduction, I leave that off. High ISO speed noise reduction, I also leave that off as well. Moving into seven, drive mode. You've got not how fast you can drive, but how many frames a second you can shoot. This is a single frame every time I press the button. I'll show you. Let's see, let me get into shooting. Press the button. Take a picture, it takes one picture, it doesn't take more than that. So let's go back into here and hit drive mode, high, and we'll hear what that does. Boom, it's continuously shooting until you run out of space in the buffer or on your memory card. Uh, I believe it's nine frames a second that you can get right there. Now in the last one, I don't have to show you, but it's low speed continuous. I don't have to show you, but I might as well much slower. If you're gonna be in this, I highly recommend that you do leave it in the high mode right there. Self timer, remote control. You can see that you can set the timer to 10 seconds, two seconds, or custom. Moving into eight, we have movie record size. You can see right here, you've got 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames, at 29 frames, they call this 30 frames, 24 frames, then you've got uh, 720 in 60 and 720 in 30 frames. I am a big proponent of leaving it in 1920 uh, by 1080 at 24 frames a second, or in this case, 23.98. That's more of a cinematic look. The look that you get when you watch movies, because movies are shot in 24 frames, uh, what you normally would see TV in is 30 frames, and then what you see 60 frames is mostly video games. It looks kind of awkward when you shoot there, but test them out for yourself to see which one you personally like. Sound recording, uh, most of the time you're gonna leave it on auto unless you have an external microphone, and then you can go ahead and manually change those yourself. Movie Servo AF is on. This is great. This is gonna help you autofocus. Uh, in continuous focus when you're shooting video. This camera's fantastic for that. Moving on, we have AF with shutter button during movie recording. That means you can still focus with the button right up here when you're shooting video. Auto slow shutter, we have this off as well. And that takes us through that entire menu system. I know that's a lot of stuff, but we'll keep moving on to the wrench mode. Create a folder monthly. 
or do you want it daily? Either one you choose. It's either gonna set a new folder every day when you start taking pictures or once a month it will switch the folder. File numbering, I leave on continuous, meaning one photo, when I take the next photo, it's number two, and when I turn the camera off and turn it back on, it doesn't reset to one. It will go to 9,999 before it resets back to zero. Formatting your card, this is what you would do if you wanted to clean off everything on your card. So when you get a new card or a fresh card when you're ready to shoot, you go here and you hit format. I'm not gonna do that right now because I have sample images that I wanna show you guys, but you always wanna reformat your card right before you're shooting. First, you wanna make sure that you've saved all of the images that you want from those cards because once you format it, it's much harder to get them back and recover them. So I'm not gonna format right now. Video system, you have options for NTSC or PAL. That, that depends on where you are in the world. Display settings, I have display control on auto. Electronic level, um, that is pretty cool. Let me show you that real quick out here. You see the level on the screen? Yeah, it looks like I'm flying an airplane and even if you tilt like this, you can see the lines moving. That's your auto level, and when it gets green, like that, that means you're set properly and level with the horizon. So moving back in, number two, eco mode is off, power saving, uh, display off three minutes, yep, you get that. Basically, it's trying to help you save your battery. Um, display brightness, right now it won't let me change that, but when you go into display brightness to change, the reason it won't let me change it is because I'm plugged into this thing right now using an external display. But when you do this, this is actually pretty cool. Go into display brightness, you can set the brightness of the LCD, and then when you put your eye up to the viewfinder, the EVF, you can set the brightness for the EVF as well. Then you can set your time zone, your date and time right there. Language, whatever you're gonna speak. I speak English, but look at all those different languages you could do. Holy God, I'm not gonna change it because I'll never be able to get back to English. The beep, I always have the beep on. That's for this, check this out. Boom, boom, beep. I like to know when I'm in focus and that's what the focus beep does for me. Hints and tips, you could leave this on and off. It's actually nice to have on in the menu because then it's like having a user's guide built into the camera for you. And sensor cleaning is if your sensor is dirty, you see some dust, in your images, you can go ahead and do a sensor cleaning right there. Wi-Fi Connect is self-explanatory. Wireless settings, of course, for how to set your wireless. Certification logo display. I have no idea why you need to do this. This isn't for you. This is probably for the FCC. They be chasing me all the time. Moving next to custom shooting mode. That's where you would set your C1 and C2s. That's a pretty advanced mode. It's awesome to have. Copyright info. This is where you could set up your name like this. Enter author's name. Enter copyright details. This is great. It's going to save that information in the metadata of your file so that if somebody ever sees it, they see your information in there. I would highly recommend you take the time to get that set. Reset camera would reset everything we just did. And the firmware is set to version 1.0.0 currently. Uh, if you need to update it, this is where you would come to update firmware if they put out a firmware update. Moving on to the custom function menu. The first one is blacked out because we're plugged in as well. This is where you can make custom changes to different buttons. We can go in here and look, you can see that you can map out these different dials. That's exactly what we did. You would then go in here and you can then make the custom settings as you see fit. This is up to your own taste. This is personal choice right here. So go in there and make those settings changes. That's what we like to do as well. For example, I went ahead and switched this back dial around here for when I spin it to be my aperture. I deactivated most of these things around here so I didn't accidentally change something I didn't want to change. As I said earlier, we made this ISO. I made this one right here, this MF this uh, MFN button, we made that for recording video because it was much easier in selfie mode to hit this button to record video than it was to hit this button back here. And this button right here, we left this one to do uh, changing my shutter speed. So those are the custom settings. There's a lot of different options. Play around in there, read what they're about because your manual will tell you exactly what those are about. And then next and last, is the custom tab. This is where you can add functions that you wanna to get to quicker. Uh, this is awesome to have. You can set things like sensor cleaning or battery information. Whatever you wanna put in here, you can go ahead and do that. And when I come back, I'm gonna show you a couple of other things with Live View that are pretty cool. 
So I want to ask you a question. How do you organize and protect your gear? Well, if you don't know, go ahead and download my brand new app called My Gear Vault. It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your camera gear, and it's free. Check it out at mygearvault.com. So let's go through the live view and show you what you're gonna see in the EVF or on back of your screen. So right here, you can see all the different things on the screen, like the bottom left-hand corner, that is my shutter speed. As I turn the dial with my front finger, you can see the shutter speed is changing. That's what's great about mirrorless cameras. You can see the effect happening as you change something. Moving next to that, that is your aperture. You can see that as I turn that, it's getting darker as I raise the aperture. As I lower it, it's going to let more light in. You can also see the meter right next to that. You see how I'm gonna get the number right, the, the line right in the middle, boom. That's telling me that it thinks that is the proper exposure. And then to the right of that is your ISO. See how I change that? It gets darker as it goes down. It gets brighter as it goes up. This is like giving you free camera information and photography knowledge. It's true. It's actually pretty easy when you have an EVF. So right up here on the top left, you've got manual, and next to the manual, you've got your battery indicator plus the RAW plus the JPEG, which is showing you what we're shooting, how many frames you have left right there on your SD card, and next to that, you can see how much time you have left for video, as well as what video mode you're in. This box right here that has squiggly lines that are moving, that's called a histogram. Then moving to the bottom middle, you can see again that is your digital horizon. Let me show you the Q button. Hit the Q button and up top you can see it says AF. It also tells you what it is on the screen. And then if you wanna arrow through it because you don't wanna to touch the screen, you can just go ahead and move the jog dial from left to right or whichever way you wanna go. Then you can move through by dialing down and get to all those different settings as well. So how do you shoot video? Well, in this case, you could be in just manual mode and still shoot video. So I'm going to go ahead and focus right here. I'm going to use this button up top, the MFN button, and that we have set to shoot video and boom. Now we can see where we are recording video. You can see we're at four seconds and five seconds and six seconds. If I want to refocus, hold the button. See that? It's refocusing. That's great. Hello. There it is. I love the focus on this camera. Look how smooth that was. You can see that it's gone ahead and smoothly focusing and then come back to my hand, back in focus. To stop the video recording, we hit that same button, boom. It stops recording the video and puts you back into live view right here. But now how do you review your images and your videos? Right here's your play button. You go ahead and hit play. That's the video we just took. And as I turn the dial, it's gonna to rotate to the pictures that I took earlier as test shots, boom. I'm gonna go back and show some of the other images that I took as well. So I'm going this way. I could also use the arrow button and they will move much faster. I took a bunch of shots in a row right there as you can see when we were testing out the camera. Yep, that was when I was taking a lot of shots. There we go. So if I wanna see info, I'm gonna go ahead and hit info and there's the info that I have from the images that I shot. Uh, that's pretty simple. To get back out of that, you go ahead and hit the play button again. It brings us back into live view mode, and that's pretty much it. I know I went over a lot of information, so I would say please subscribe here on YouTube so you can be notified when all of my videos go live so that they can help you become a better photographer. But also, save the link to this video so that you can come back at any point and re-watch any section that you want if there's something that you don't remember how to use. Or, if I didn't talk about it, definitely check out the user's manual because it's probably in there. So that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Hey, look at my logo in the top left-hand corner. Yep, you could click that to subscribe. Now in the top right-hand corner, we have My Gear Vault, the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. Go download it right now. And finally, bottom right, we've got the real-world review of the EOS M5. Go ahead and click it.